So my name is Cameron Henry. I'm the vinyl mastering engineer here at Welcome to 1979. I've been here for five years. Uh, started as a freelance recording engineer in town and eventually migrated to mastering and cutting master lacquers for final record production. So I've tried out a lot of different pieces of gear and the first one I bought was the, uh, the MVP because it's something I can use every day, all the time. So when we do direct to disc recording, um, it's a lot of just on the fly maneuvering. The uh, SFE section with this uh, width control allows me to really make sure the low end is in the center um, by just slow switching on the low frequency band and cranking it down, I can really get the low end centered and make sure I'm not gonna have problems there. Uh, also just the versatility of the, of the onboard compressor, uh, being able to use it in a stereo mode or in a mid side mode, that was kind of the, the deal breaker that made me need this unit because I deal a lot in mid side. Records are cut in a mid side fashion. So being able to control the level, uh, the dynamics of the stereo image is super helpful and being able to do it without having to like repatch and do anything weird by just simply pressing a button and having that control and then on top of that the sound is really interesting like the the uh, silk uh, selections for the uh, texture of the compression is is really amazing and I honestly don't understand exactly what it's doing and don't kind of care to I just like flipping through them and seeing which one sounds the best and go with it uh, Everything that I've cut since I've had this unit has had this unit on it. Yeah. Vinyl for the last, well, I don't know, 15 years has been steadily coming back. And I'm sure at one point it was a fad or people were buying records just to kind of look at it and they bought a little crappy turntable and listened back on it. But after 15 years, people are now listening on really good playback systems with really nice speakers. They have legit hi-fis again. And it's really important that the record sounds good, not just plays. I was finding with bands that I would record and mix when they would get their final record back, it sounded lackluster to the master source and I didn't know why. And when I would inquire with the guy that did this, he would just kind of say, that's how vinyl sounds, don't worry about it. You know, which ticked me off because I didn't know how records were even made at the time. So I started investigating that. Chris was going through the exact same issue simultaneously and we were friends so we'd talk about it. And he finally said, I'm going to buy a lathe and I need someone to run it. And I was like, well, I will. I'll figure it out. You know, it was more like the philosophy of what we were going for was on point. So uh, there's a mastering engineer named Hank Williams in town who did this forever and he started coming over at night and giving me little lessons on how the lathe operated and I'd mess with it for a week or two and then he'd come over and fix what I had broken and give me a few more pointers and then after a couple of months of dicking around with it, you know, started cutting records for people and then five years later I'm a few thousand records in and I cut records every day.